In this video on inverse functions, we learn how to find the inverse of a quadratic function. So, if you're up for it, go ahead and press pause and try and find this function's inverse. Either way, let's get started. So I'll just move this question to the side here, like so. And as I always do, I'll start by writing SOL here for solution. Let's see, we're told consider f of x which equals to x squared plus 6x minus 14, where x is greater than or equal to negative 3. We're then told find an expression for the inverse of f, or inverse f of x. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention towards here is the fact that we're told that x must be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now this is important because, as such, we're given the domain of the function. In other words, the domain of f, or f of x. And so I've now made a note of that, and that will be important later. To find this function's inverse, we proceed as follows. I'll start by copying that function, but instead of writing f of x, I'll write y equals to x squared plus 6x minus 14. And now that that's done, for quadratics, we can follow three steps. The first step, or I could just write step one, is simply to swap x and y. So I'll just write swap x and y. What I mean by that is we're going to copy this function and replace every x we see by y and the y we see here by x. So that would look like this. We'll have x equals to y squared plus 6y minus 14. Pretty simple, that's step one done. So we move on to step two. And in step two here, we need to rearrange the expression we have in order to make y the subject. And I'll quickly write that, I'll say make y the subject. Now this is important, to make y the subject in this expression, we need to complete the square on the right hand side here, which some of you may know as the vertex form. So let's go ahead, I'll say that x is equal to well, let's see. The first two terms we have here, y squared plus 6y, are the same first two terms we'd get in the expansion of y plus 3 in parentheses squared. Indeed, if we open this up, using our perfect squares formula, we'd obtain y squared plus 6y plus 3 squared, which is 9. And we can clearly see that the first two terms of this expansion are the same as the first two terms we have here. But remember, the right-hand side we have here needs to be equal to y squared plus 6y minus 14. But what we've written so far is equal to y squared plus 6y plus 9. So to make sure that this right-hand side is equal to this right-hand side, we'll need to subtract 23. Indeed, since y plus 3 in parentheses squared is equal to y squared plus 6y plus 9, if we take 23 away, we'll fall back on y squared plus 6y minus 14. And so, as such, we've now completed the square on the right-hand side. And so, we carry on. Remember, our goal is to make y the subject. And so, we isolate this y plus 3 squared by getting rid of this 23 that's being subtracted from the right-hand side. And to do that, we add 23 to both sides of this equation. So, we end up with x plus 23 equals to, in parentheses, y plus 3 squared. I carry on up here, and I'll rewrite this as y plus 3 in parentheses squared on the left-hand side, which equals to x plus 23. The next thing I do is I'll get rid of this power of 2. Since y plus 3 squared is equal to x plus 23, we can state that y plus 3 must equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 23. Careful, if you forget to write plus or minus, that would be counted as a mistake. So make sure to keep this in mind. Finally, to make y the subject, we get rid of this 3 that's being added to the left-hand side, and we do so by subtracting 3 from both sides. So this becomes y equals to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 23. And as such, that's the end of step 2. Indeed, we can clearly see that we've made y the subject. So we move on to the third and final step, step 3, in which we need to determine whether we consider the function negative 3 plus the square root of x plus 23, or the function negative 3 minus the square root of x plus 23. 
and to do so we make use of a very important rule about functions and their inverse functions. And so I'll just write choose between the two functions, choose between the two functions, so plus or minus, using the rule, and here's the important rule to remember, that the domain of f, say domain of f of x, must be equal to the range of the inverse function. So I'll say range of inverse f of x. And if you hadn't seen this rule before, do make a note of it now. Remember at the beginning, we had made a note of the fact that the domain of f of x was x greater than or equal to negative 3. In other words, the domain of our function is all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 3. And so according to the rule we just boxed, the range of our inverse function must also be all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 3. But now since we have y equals to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 23, the only way that this could possibly lead to y values being greater than or equal to negative 3 is if we add to the negative 3 we have here, which tells us that the function we're after is y equals to negative 3 plus the square root of x plus 23. And so carrying on up here, I'll go ahead and say we must have, must have, y greater than or equal to negative 3. So, two dots, y equals to negative 3 plus the square root of x plus 23. And we could write our final answer as inverse f of x equals to negative 3 plus the square root of x plus 23. And that's the final answer. And there we go, that's how we can find the inverse function of a quadratic function. And as such, you can stop watching the video now. But if you're interested, keep on watching and I'll spend another minute or two explaining why we were given the domain x greater than or equal to negative 3 in the first place, and I'll show how we could have equally been given the domain x less than or equal to negative 3. So let's go ahead. The whole idea here is to remember that for a function to have an inverse, it needs to be a one-to-one -one mapping. In turn, this means that it needs to pass the horizontal line test. Now the function we have here is a quadratic function, and its graph is a parabola, so looking something like this. And like all parabola, it has a vertex. In this case, it's a minimum point, which is right here. Now you can go ahead and check with this function's curve, but this parabola's vertex has coordinates negative 3, negative 23. And you may notice that this x-coordinate negative 3 is the opposite of the number we had here, and the y-coordinate negative 23 is exactly what we see here when we completed the square. That being said, I carry on. Looking at this parabola, it's quite clear that it fails the horizontal line test. Indeed, with the exception of the vertex point, regardless of where I draw a horizontal line, it will cut the curve in two points. It therefore fails the horizontal line test. And so the fact that we're told to only consider this function over the domain x greater than or equal to negative 3 is essentially telling us to only consider the right-hand side of this parabola. In other words, the portion of the parabola to the right of the vertex, which would look like the part of the curve I've just drawn here. Now looking at this curve, which technically would carry on increasing forever, it's quite clear that no matter where we draw a horizontal line, it will only cut this curve once. And consequently, this passes the horizontal line test and over this domain the function therefore has an inverse, which is the inverse function we found earlier on. But we could have also been told to consider this function over the domain x less than or equal to negative 3, in which case we would have considered the left-hand side of this curve, so that would look something like this. There we go, with the vertex here at negative 3, negative 23. And in fact, maybe I'll label this. This is for x greater than or equal to negative 3, and this curve here is for x less than or equal to negative 3. And if we had been given this domain, then in our step 3 here, we would have chosen negative 3 minus the square root of x plus 23. In other words, as we do the working to find the inverse of a quadratic function, once we've made y the subject, we end up with two possibilities which are reflected by this plus or minus we see here. 
and it's important to realize what that plus or minus actually means. It's technically telling us that we can consider either the right-hand side of the parabola or the left-hand side of the parabola, and to choose between both, we need to refer to the domain of the function we were given. And on the off chance that we're not given a domain, we'll need to choose between the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the parabola and clearly state which one we've chosen. And once that's done, we'll be able to select our inverse function accordingly. And there we go. If you watch this video all the way to the end, you should hopefully now have a pretty good understanding of how to find the inverse function of a quadratic function. And all that being said, that's it for this tutorial.